My guest is Jonathan Taylor, Indianapolis Colts Pro Bowl running back. He rushed for 1,811 yards last year. He led the entire NFL with 18 touchdowns. Uh, he's a franchisee with Topper's Pizza, and he owns a franchise in Wisconsin where he starred at the University of Wisconsin. Jonathan, thanks for joining me on Sports Business Radio. How are you? I'm doing well, Brian. How about yourself? I appreciate you having me on today. Yeah, I appreciate you joining me. Uh, all right. So how did you become a franchise owner of Topper's Pizza? What was it about Topper's Pizza that made you want to invest? So number one, uh, you just look at something that you can get in on the ground floor that has a high profile margin. Um, and number two, something you have to be passionate about. I feel like anything you invest in, you, you really have to, to truly care and be passionate about it. So I used to live right down the street from Toppers. It got me through a lot of evenings, a lot of afternoons here in Madison. So, you know, when I got presented with the opportunity to get involved with Toppers, it was a no brainer for me because one, I knew the culture, I knew what they were about. And then after sitting down with the owner, Scott, and being able to discuss with him and, and pick his brain a little bit, it was a no brainer for me. I would imagine you get presented with a lot of opportunity to invest and be a part of something. You know, you just mentioned you're familiar with Topper's Pizza, but what are some of the elements that you look for when you're going to make an investment? One of the first things I look at is, is this something that can be sustainable? And the way I figure out if something can be sustainable is I kind of ask about their core values. And one of the things that me and Scott talked about were their core values. And he mentioned you know, he likes to bring in people that live with integrity. He likes to have people in the building that have passion. He likes people in the building that like to have fun. And, and when I think, when I thought about it, it's, you know, if you have integrity, you know, are you doing the right things when no one is watching? Are you passionate about what you are doing? And if you can have fun while doing those two things, that's a recipe for something amazing. So, you know, understanding and knowing the culture and the kind of, of members that we have here in the Toppers organization, I felt like it was a recipe for success, you know, and no matter what you're doing, whether it's a piece of business, whether it's a phone business, I feel like that's a recipe for success. Now you're having a special day there today in Wisconsin. You have a lot of people coming through. You've got a charitable component where you're donating to a nonprofit there in Wisconsin. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So, so it's, so it's the Looser's family community center. And I actually first got connected with this center with my roommate, Madison Cohn. He had an internship there one summer and I was able to go there and interact with the kids at the community center. And when I saw the look on their faces and at the time we're sophomores, their faces lit up and not because we were badgers, but because we were like big brothers to them. So that was a pivotal point because it, it allowed me to see that it's way bigger than football. If you have a chance to truly change a young person's life, you're a, a young kid's role model. So that was a real pivotal point for myself. So when it was time to, to come back and give back to the Madison community, it was a no brainer for me. It was my number one choice. Who are some of your role models? Who helped you get to where you are today? So 100%, some of my role models are, of course, Corey Clement, who is from the South Jersey area, like myself. So being able to watch him in high school and then watch him have success at the University of Wisconsin and then him obtain his dreams, he was a huge role model for me. And then once I kind of understood the really fraternity that you're in, you know, as a Wisconsin running back, the Melvin Gordon, the James White, and, and being able to talk to some of those guys and have their guidance, they were some of my biggest role models on being able to help me through my transition of going to high school and then going through college and then doing that transition to the NFL. I have a lot of athletes on this show. They all have people who help them, whether it's their agents or people that they have who they've hired that kind of manage their investments and help them sort through the opportunities that are out there. Who's on Jonathan Taylor's team that helps you uh, manage your off the field stuff. So 100% my agent Barry Gardner has been amazing. Um, just as far as teaching me, I know a lot of times, like you mentioned, there are guys who have people on their team who handle things for them. And I have a team, but my team is interested in educating. You know, if you have a team that educates you, that, that truly means that they are there for you. 
not just having you as a as a using having you use them as a crutch and saying you need me in order to do these things you want to do it's no i know what you want to do let me teach you the process so you understand fully what you're doing and how that transpires so i think that being able to have a team around me that educates to help build my knowledge is something that's very vital for for every athlete to have Look at the NIL space right now. It's changed a lot, even since you left Wisconsin, which wasn't that long ago. Um, you know, are you hoping some of the other, you know, I see a lot of like pros going back to their alma maters and helping kind of navigate the space for the students that are coming up. But I'm wondering, like, did you take classes at Wisconsin that helped you understand business? So at the University of Wisconsin, um, I was a philosophy major, but it's, it's, interesting now because usually you have to wait until you transition to the NFL to start experience this NI name image likeness you know business side of things and now the the kids are getting introduced to introduced to it as young as you know high schoolers you know there are some high schoolers who have deals before they even step foot on the field so I think that's super important to have some of these NFL veterans coming back to their alma maters to help guide these kids through this transition because there are a lot of kids that can get taken advantage of if they have they don't know anything about you know the rules and the regulations on how these things work. So being able to to educate these young kids on hey you're gonna get introduced to some of these things a lot faster than you normally would. So let me help you. Here are some tips. Here are some guidelines to follow as you navigate through this space. All right, I gotta ask you as someone who played in the Big Ten. Big Ten just added USC and UCLA. What in the world is going on with college football? Those are going to be some long road trips, but what were your thoughts on that? I thought that it was really interesting because a lot of times you won't play some of those teams, especially being a Big Ten team, unless it's a bowl game, playoff game potentially. But I think it's interesting because now you get to have a lot of top teams around the country competing against one another multiple times a year rather than, you know, that one time, one off spin, maybe bowl game or something. But um, I think it's huge. It's going to be interesting. Um, It's going to put the Big Ten to the test. It's going to increase the the, the popularity of the Big Ten, which I'm always an advocate and a fan for because I think the Big Ten is the best conference in college football. Um, So I'm excited to watch the Badgers go up against all these new teams. So there's basically like two super conferences now, the SEC and, and the Big Ten. And I don't even know how they call it the Big Ten anymore when there's like 18 teams in the conference. But is that good for college sports when you've got two super conferences and then just kind of everyone else trying to compete? I think it does force other conferences to kind, kind of elevate their gameplay and, and very quickly. Um, one downside that I do see is that there may be some old college rivalries that you know may be no more, or maybe they still keep those rivalries and somehow make a rule or keep that the same. But that's the only thing is there are just some traditions, some rivalries that you know have been longstanding for a very long time and are always classic games, and you may not get those anymore. All right, I got to ask you about the Colts last year. What a season you had! As I said, you led the league in rushing, uh, 18 touchdowns. You've always been a tremendous running back, but last year you took it to a different level. What was it about last year that clicked for you that allowed you to become the best of the best? I think being able to really have a year under my belt, and not only myself, but the entire 2020 rookie class coming in with the pandemic. I mean, we're all learning new systems virtually. And then the first time putting them into effect were during training camp with NFL all pros and and veterans. So after being able to have a lot of the playbook under my belt, I'm able to go out there and learn how to play the game at a high level, not just learning how to play the game at the NFL level. Yeah, Frank Reich is an offensive-minded coach, so it's probably great playing for someone who really understands offensive schemes. That definitely is a huge help as well. I mean, Coach, Coach Frank is always trying to scheme up new ways in order to beat these new defenses because defenses are evolving now more than ever. I mean, they have freakish athletes on the defensive side of the ball, so scheme is going to be everything. What about Matt Ryan? He's your new quarterback. Have you had a chance to work with him a little bit? And, you know, you've had two different quarterbacks in your season so far. Uh, what's it like integrating a new quarterback into the system? 
I mean, you just talk about the epitome of a leader, someone who you want to play for, someone who you want to be at your best for, and, and that's Matt Ryan, and, and he demands that. And I think that's what you need in order to get to where you want to go as a team and winning a championship. You need a leader that demands your best, and, and everyone wants to be at their best. And I think that um, having him in the building, there's just this energy, this aura around him, and I think it's going to be really good for us this year, man. Everyone's been working really, really hard. Other investments, other business interests. I have guys on and they talk about tech. They talk about, you know, restaurants, clothing, music. What are some other things that you're interested in as far as your investment portfolio? Um, so definitely in the tech space, that is a, a space that's already been growing for quite some time, but especially with the pandemic hitting, it kind of boosted that growth from exponentially just forcing everyone to be using technology day in and day out for every single thing. So the tech space is definitely something that I've been really getting into now recently, um, especially due to the pandemic. But there are a lot of new technology out there that will be for the better good of society. And I think that, you know, if you're able to find the right one, it's going to be really good for you. All right, let's end with this uh, Topper's Pizza. You know, I'm looking online and seeing the menu. There's like macaroni and cheese pizza. There's all these different kinds of pizzas. What's your, if, if you're designing your own pizza, what do you want on it? So I'm an East Coast guy from South Jersey. There's nothing better to me than a plain pepperoni slice of pizza. But I will say after being in Madison, being in with Toppers, the Buffalo chicken pizza is pretty good like that and i'm not usually used to having a lot of different toppings on my pizza but i will say the buffalo chicken pizza is really really good are we gonna see you back there today are you gonna be making some pizzas or are you front of house only shaking hands and kissing babies no that's definitely in the work i'm a hands-on kind of guy i love the work i love the process so being able to to go through that process behind the scenes is something that i'm all in for that's awesome. Jonathan Taylor, Pro Bowl running back with the Indianapolis Colts, franchisee with Topper's Pizza. Thanks so much for joining me on Sports Business Radio. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. And best of luck in the upcoming season as well. Thank you very much.